Next up, um, we have Mike Reinhardt from Rotterdam, the Netherlands. He's a web designer helping people build a fast web that works for everyone. Uh, Mike has been developing with WordPress since 2007. Over time, he has branched out his skill with responsive design and the passion for web performance. So let's hear Mike's talk a deep dive into WordPress performance. for the great introduction. So welcome. My name is Mike Reinhardt. I'm a web developer, web designer. I'm from Rotterdam, the Netherlands. As you can see here in the back, uh, that's my hometown. So it's also a harbor city. And yeah, Konnichiwa. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about web performance. I'm going to talk about three areas on how to speed up your website. So let's dive right in on uh, why speed matters. So why speed matters? Well, today we live in a world where milliseconds matters. And we, uh, yeah. speed is very important. We want to, our websites to load as fast as possible. First impressions are made in seconds. And our users are moving fast. They're always on the go. Visiting our websites from, our, from their mobile phones. And they want our websites to load instantly. So how fast your website loads is absolutely the first impression you give to the user. One out of two people expect a web page to load in less than two seconds. According to Google, 53% of website visitors will leave your site if it takes longer than three seconds to load. So you could be, yeah, like use losing half of your visitors before they even have seen your site. Speed matters. <laughs> if we look at the uh, user experience of uh, speed, our, our users, they care, yeah. The most important feature is uh, speed. So it's all the way on top of the UX hierarchy. Because basically if your web page is too slow, if it doesn't load at all, then basically they cannot use your website. So we need to make sure that our website loads fast. If you look at some of the big companies like Google, Amazon, they really pay a lot of attention to speed. For instance, Amazon discovered that just by making their website 100 milliseconds slower, they lost 1% in sales. That's like billions of dollars for Amazon. Well, maybe we, we are not making so much money as Amazon, but still, yeah, who wants to lose money, right? And there are ma many more case, case studies where yeah, performance uh, saw a lot of improvements on conversions and sales. So a good website to, a good website to check is WPO Stat which is uh, a website that lists all kinds of case studies from big companies that saw major improvements of performance. Speed matters. Time is money. Uh, the faster our website loads, the more visitors it will attract to your website. And the more visitors, it will also keep your web, uh, web visitors more engaged. They stay longer on your page and eventually lead to more conversions and more sales. So more money. Time is money. So knowing that yeah, speed is important, that we can make more money, uh, keep users engaged, and, yeah, we all should be having a fast loading website and rank on top of all the web pages out there. But how are we actually doing? No, by knowing all this. 
Well, we're not doing that great. We actually kind of suck. It takes about 15 seconds for a mobile web page to load on a 3G network. So if you're considering that if people leave within three seconds, you could be losing a lot of your customers. As the web evolved, if we look back from the beginning, so web 1.0, we didn't pay much attention to speeds because yeah, we were too busy with experimenting stuff and trying to push the, the limits of our web websites and computers. But as the web evolved, uh, our web pages became bigger and bigger. According to Google, 53% uh, of our web page is now more than one, uh, 2 megabytes, consisting mainly of JavaScript and images. So our web page has grown so big that now it's about the same size as the game Doom. I don't know if anybody knows here the game Doom, but it's a 3D first-person shooter with 3D graphics, multiple levels, sound effects, and we are still struggling today to yeah, serve a web page with content in the same size. And this causes our web pages to slow down and affecting, at the end, the user experience. Because yeah, users don't measure web, web speeds with a stopwatch. They measure it with their eyes, their brains, on how they perceive the, the web page loads. Yeah. So how fast a website feels. Google is obsessed with the speed because it's directly connected to the user experience. <clears throat> Way back in 2006, they dis discovered a secret. And Marissa Meyer, at that time Vice President of Google, she was hired to yeah. improve the experience of the search uh, page. Well, Marissa didn't have much knowledge about HTML or, or design, but she knew one thing, is, and that is A-B testing. So what she did, she started a, a user experience research, and she asked the, the, the users, hey, would you like to see 10 results or 30 results? Well, the answer was quite obvious. Of course, 30 results. More is more, right? So they did the test, and at the end, after the test, they showed half of the visitors a web page with 30 results, and the other half with 10 results. After the, after the test, they were shocked. What they saw was that the page with 30 results got 20% less traffic. They saw a drop in, in visitors and also in searches. People were searching less on the page with 30 results. How could it be, right? Because they did what the users wanted. They said, okay, we give them 30, 30 results, that's better. But by looking closer at, at this uh, test, they found out by just half a second, in load time, between the page with 10 results and 30 results, ended up in half a second, uh, yeah, more load time. So, which caused users to, yeah, not to engage and to leave the site. So from that on, on, from that moment on, they really invested in speed, and yeah, from that point on, it uh, was history. They managed to speed up their uh, search results. So speed wins. Google has been pushing speed for quite a long time. And in the beginning, nobody was paying much of attention. Uh, they started uh, 2006, 2010. They said uh, Google 
start ranking, uh, yeah, taking ranking speed as a ranking factor in uh, web pages. And just last July, they announced that they were using uh, page speeds in mobile rankings. Because what what Google says is well, it's quite logical. It's, you know, people want to find answers to their questions as fast as possible. So how fast do we need to make this web page? What is good for Google? And where do we even start by optimizing our websites? Well, web performance is not a destination. It's a journey. Well, we could start with going to Google and just uh, typing uh, how to make my website faster. We will end up with yeah, a lot of interesting results. And yeah, they might not sound uh, all obvious at that time, because when you first start out, then you need to... Uh, yeah, you're just starting out, so... They don't, don't make sense at that time. Maybe later on when you ticked off all the boxes, then they uh, make time. But where do you start? Well, I already said uh, web performance is a journey. You make small changes day after day, and big small changes lead to yeah, big performance gains. So to begin with optimizing your website, you use, you, you, need to, you need to measure your web. You need to measure how fast your website loads. There are several tools out there that can help you with this. So here I made an overview of uh, several tools you can access online. We have PageSpeed Insights, GT Metrics. Pingdom is also a really familiar one among the, the WordPress uh, community. Web page test, uh, of course, Chrome developer tools, which is right in your browser, and Lighthouse. All these tools, they offer all kinds of metrics, like page speed score, fully loaded time, your page size, number of requests. So at Pingdom, we have uh, all kinds of nice metrics, load time, how much faster than you are than other sites. Web page test is, goes a little bit into more detail. They show how uh, first interactive. They have also a metric called the speed index. But all of these metrics, yeah, they don't really tell much about how a user perceives how fast the website loads. How does how does your website feels how fast it is? Because, yeah, they don't measure web, web performance with a stopwatch. Huh? They measure it with their brain and eyes. Well, we all experienced, yeah, when you're having fun, time flies. And when you're waiting for you know, luggage or whatever, uh, the experience of time can be very slow. It's the perceptions of time. I'll take elevators, for example. Does anybody know why there are mirrors in elevators? Well, as it turned out, well, in the beginning of time, so when elevators were first introduced, they were very slow, and people had to wait a lot, and they were complaining. They were always complaining, can't you make elevators faster? So, lots of architects and designers thought about solutions. How can we make elevators faster? But then one clever designer came up with a solution. He said, we need to focus on the user. We need to think what he thinks. And how can we distract him from thinking that elevators are too slow? So what they did is they installed mirrors in the elevators distract users from thinking that the elevators are slow. So after a follow-up research, they asked the users, what do you think of the elevators? 
and they and they said, oh, they're so much faster, and they didn't change any of the speeds. So it's really yeah, what the user feels, how fast things are going, and the perception of time, the perception of speed. If we get back to the web web development, web performance. It's a, it's the same thing. Uh, when our website loads, we first see a white loading screen, and then a pixel pops up, and some images, and the first console paint, which is a, a re relatively new metric, it calculates how fast the first visual element shows on your web page. how fast you can show something interesting to the user and keep them engaged. So as your web page loads, the first, the first uh, other metric that is important is yeah, how fast can you make it feel ready to the user. And that's the time to interactive metric. Time to interactive metric, metric it uh, calculates when the user can interact with the websites, when it is live, and when it feels ready for the user. So, you know, when you visit a web page and you see it loading, and you already, yeah, want to click on the on the page or in search box, but you cannot, and you still see the loading icon running. Yeah? So, but when it is fully loaded, when you can interact, that's when it's ready. That's what we need to be optimizing for. Web performance can be very complex. There are different moments in time that uh, when you visit a web page, you send out a request, get back a bunch of stuff. We have the back end, the front end, maybe different JavaScript frameworks. But actually we can break it down into very simple rules and these three rules are yeah you need to send fewer things you need to send things smaller and you need to send things more efficiently so let's go let's optimize our website i have a page here which is one of my site hustles it's uh, the miami guides so it's a, a a tourist guide for Miami and I will show you how I improve the web performance speeds and outrank the competition. So first thing, first thing first, uh, we need to measure a starting point, how fast our website loads. So I checked in uh, Google Lighthouse, which is available right in your browser, in the Google Chrome browser. You can do an audit and set what you want to test. So I selected here to test it on a mobile device. And when I run, I came to the conclusion that it runs in 6.5 seconds. Time to interactive. So when users are able to really click on buttons and scroll on the site. So which is way too slow. And we need to optimize that. So using the tools, we're going to find what is slowing us down. There are opportunities given by Google Lighthouse. As you can see here, it uh, offers information that I can optimize the site by deferring off-screen images. Off-screen images, as I show right here, I don't know if you guys know, you have an above the fold and below the fold. So all your images and resources below the fold are not really needed when a user first loads the web page. So you could use lazy load images to lazy load them. And when the user scrolls down, that they will uh, be loaded onto the page. This improves performance. So we did that, 3.9 seconds. That's quite an improvement already. But we are not done yet. Because this was on a desktop and our user, users today are mobile. I don't know about you, but 
if I'm uh, checking my uh, websites, or if I look also to the younger generation, my daughter, they don't even open their laptop anymore. Or they will always, yeah, they most of the time visit websites from a mobile device. So mobile first. So optimizing for mobile, I saw in uh, what you see here is the waterfall view in Google Chrome. And what you can do here is sort by size so that you see the yeah, biggest resources first. And by focusing on the low times, the long horizontal bars, you want to keep them as short as possible. So what we found here is that we have one script which is taking too long to load. So we dove right in and optimized that file. We cut out all the unnecessary code and combined it. Next thing we did was to upgrade our hosting. I think this is really yeah, one of the first thing, if you want a fast loading website, you need to pay close attention to on what kind of server you're hosting your file. So I use uh, Google, the Google Cloud, um, but there are many other web hosting providers. I don't know about uh, Japan or Tokyo, I did see Google in the woods. Next step is uh, inst run WordPress on PHP 7. WordPress is using, it's a minimum requirement for, for WordPress to run it on PHP 7.2. And it's amazing that still 20% of all WordPress sites are using PHP 7. So they can gain a really performance boost by just switching to PHP 7. And you can make your website like twice as fast. Next thing is enabling gzip compression. Compressing the files of your uh, server can really improve the response time. Then we have HTTP2. So it's the newer, uh, yeah, the newer variant of uh, HTTP. And it makes your website twice as fast. Also good to consider is to use a CDN. Does anybody know what a CDN is? Content, man, man, content delivery network. So it basically means that people can access your website from very various parts in the world much more faster because the web website will be hosted at their nearest point. <coughs> optimizing, our, optimizing our images. Well, there's a very good guide that can explain how and which, op which images you need to optimize by Andy Osami. You can also use plugins for, to optimize images. There are various plugins to use. I'm using uh, Image, Imagefy right now. So it automatically compress and optimize your images when uploading it to your WordPress site. So it's really easy and, and you don't have to worry about users uploading too big of files. Caching. Well, you need to cache as much as possible. Because by caching you don't put too much pressure on your database and you turn the dynamic content into static HTML, which will load much, much faster. Um, what I'm using is W3 Total Cache, but you also have W Super Cache from Automatic, I believe. Yeah. Then about scripts, your uh, CSS and JavaScript, we can merge and minify it by op auto optimize. I already talked about lazy loading. There is a plugin for that as well. That's, that's the nice thing about WordPress. It's, there's a solution for everything. Plugin load filter. I've been using this for quite some time and it's uh, really handy because what plugin load filter does, it disables plugins 
on individual pages because yeah, most of the time you don't need plugins on every page like on your home page you don't need for example the contact form plugin so you can just disable it there and decrease the total file size so by doing all of these uh, tweaks and changes I managed to improve the speed to 3.8 seconds so that's awesome right <laughs> Speed matters, and mobile speed matters, but how fast your website feels is also important. And we need to optimize for the perceived speed. So that's my talk, and I'll be welcome to answer any questions about web performance. Uh, I have also a link if you like to have a guide about how to optimize your website. It goes a little bit deeper into all the individual plugins and how to uh, configure them. You can connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook. Or just send me an email via my website. Thank you very much for being here today and joining my talk. And I'm really glad uh, to be part of this community. And share my knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, does anyone have a, a question? No. <laughs> Do you have any experience with uh, optimizing uh, WooCommerce? WooCommerce. Well, you could use uh, to experience to. Uh, oh, the mic. Let me just stand here. <coughs> hello, hello. Yes. Yeah. All right. So to optimize WooCommerce, yeah, definitely you can use the tools that I showed you, the plugins, and also using the met uh, yeah loading metrics to measure your website and see what is slowing you down. So, uh, yeah, I would just find the things, uh, what is uh, keeping your website from loading faster. <coughs> Minimizing the script of uh, yeah, what I mentioned uh, earlier, the plugins like Auto-Optimize Auto and also Gzip, they all yeah, help to uh, reduce the file size because that's what you <coughs> eventually want. You want to yeah, keep the total package as small as possible so that your site will uh, load much faster on a mobile device. Yeah, that's what, that's uh, what about showing the products that have already uh, around 100 or many thousand products in, in, in the page? Okay, so you mean a, a web page with thousands yeah, of yeah. products on yeah. the home page? Yes. Oh, wow. Well. So <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big, uh, well, what I think is that, yeah, you do need to focus on the information above the fold. Yeah, so you might want to optimize everything below the fold. So to focus on the images, you could use lazy load to uh, yeah, speed, up, speed up the home page. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if this is a good question, but do you have any advice on credit card transactions? Like me, uh, I have a uh, web page, and I try to do some sales through credit card. But once I, I, I use Stripe, uh, but once I use Stripe and entered my credit card number, of course, take a credit card number, and once I click, uh, it uh, takes around one minute or it was very, very slow. So the transaction failed. But sometimes it uh, succeeded, but it was very unstable. 
So I think uh, it was a very big performance problem, but I, don't, I didn't know how to solve this. So first, yes, I rebuilt my web page. And now it takes around 20 or 30 seconds. It's slow. Uh, you can't do transaction, but it's slow. But I want to solve this problem, but I don't know how to do it right now. Yeah, you can. Uh, so to improve the performance of transactions? Ah, uh, yes, this yeah. is what I want to do. But uh, I'm not sure I can do it with uh, some tools mm -hmm. you showed in this presentation. Uh, you can definitely start with uh, the tools like uh, Lighthouse or use the Pingdom tool that's, and yeah, look at how the waterfall, the total waterfall where all the elements are loaded onto the page. So there you will see which scripts, codes are slowing you down. And if you look at the longer horizontal bars and uh, how long it takes for a file to load and how big a file is, I would focus on that and try to optimize optimize those. So by either combining codes, compressing codes, or maybe removing it completely. Uh, all right, I think it's a simple transaction, so I don't think there's many some big files, but I will try to yeah. use your tools. All right. Uh, do you have any other any questions? ありがとうございます。日本語でいいです。えっと、すごく参考になりました。ありがとうございました。で、えっと、あったりしますか。そこ、そこはやん、これ見てやめておいた方がいいよっていうのがもしあれば教えていただきたい。Okay, great. So I was on the wrong channel, so can you repeat that again? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. I didn't want to show that example because I felt really bad, but I thought the... <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, the, the main travel guide of Tokyo, I think it's Tokyo Go, I tried to visit it from my desktop at home and it just wouldn't load. So they have a video, I don't know how big it is, but I guess it's several megabytes. So that's quite a bad example. I would definitely... Up whoever is... Uh, yeah. Involved in that project, I would definitely advise them to optimize it for on speed and performance. Oh, okay, sorry. So methods, bad methods, you mean? Is that what... Uh, bad methods to speed up your website, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I think, yeah, okay, so a bad practice would be if you yeah, just go to Google and yeah, if you would Google how to optimize your website, you will get all kinds of advice, but when you're just starting out, you, they, won't, yeah, they won't make any sense. So the first thing is yeah, you need to first measure your site, measure your starting point, and see which elements are slowing down your site. So you need to start, make a good start, and you need to focus on uh, you know, what you need to optimize, what makes sense at that time. Because when you just want to say, I want to make my website faster, I'm going to do gzip, and all kinds of, install all, all kinds of plugins that will just slow you down. You need to focus on what is, uh, yeah, what are the actual things that slow down your website. So, and, so the first, first thing is measuring and loading a, uh, looking at the waterfall of all the elements. Is that uh, answering your question? Okay. 
any any other questions? Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, thank you, Mike. And uh, please give a big applause once more, Mike.